What's up guys, in this month's subscription box, we thought it'd be really cool to show you how to make an inlay ring without the use of a lathe. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And in fact, the only power tool I'm going to be using is a Dremel. You can get one of those for less than 20 bucks. Let's go ahead and break this thing open. We'll see what ingredients we're working with this month. All right, opening this up, we've definitely got a lot to go over. This month's freebie, these are 10 extra clear jars. These are great for holding your own uh, inlay ingredients. So we got 10 of these. We always like to throw a fee freebie in every month. That's this month. And then in the box itself, we've got a lot to go over. So opening it up, the first thing we've got is our champagne Astro Dust color pigment. That should uh, add a really nice kind of bronzy champagne looking uh, just kind of glimmer to the ring. And then let's look at our three inlay ingredients. First, we've got turquoise, pyrite, and then a carrot of our diamonds. These are uh, rough, natural, uncut diamonds. And then, as always, we have an extra mixing vial as well as some glow powder. I believe this is aqua. Let's check that out before I go promising you guys untrue things. Yep, it's quite bright in here, but it's a little shade. I can tell that's aqua. And then last but certainly not least, this is a big one. Damascus steel ring blank. These are quite pricey, quite expensive, but we think this ring is going to really look a lot better with the addition of it. It just gives every ring such a cool premium look. All right, guys, these are all the ingredients. I'm going to do something different this month. I'm not going to use any glow powder at all, so I'm gonna completely omit that. I am also, again, not going to use the champagne uh, color pigment in order to color that. We did some test rings beforehand where we did use this. We'll throw up some pictures of that. We ha it has a really cool earthy tone that it has to it. I wanted to try something new for this second rendition I'm doing of it. So I, would, I just wanted to show you guys that it's really, it's really fine to uh, be creative and just go crazy. You don't have to use everything we give you. You can save that for a later project. I'm just going to keep it simple with these four materials. They're really, the sky is the limit. You guys can get super creative and I love seeing the pictures you guys take of your own creations when you tag us in them and share them on the Facebook group. I love seeing that. I love seeing all the creativity. So please don't feel afraid to uh, just get out there and do whatever you want with the ingredients we send. Um, you can always use them later. So anyways, I'm kind of ranting at this point. Let's go ahead and get started on uh, the design that we're going to do. Um, I'm not going to use a lathe again, so that's kind of weird. So let's talk about what I am going to use instead. So because we're not using any power tools, we gotta get creative with how we're gonna go about making this. So the first step, we need to figure out how we're going to mount our blank. My go-to is I always just like to mount it on our expanding ring mandrel here. If you don't have one, you can order one from our site. Um, but if you don't have one of these, you can use, this is a very cheap aluminum ring sizer. You can use that as well. If you have a wood dowel, you can use that. You don't even have to, you know, you can hold it in a pair of pliers like this and inlay it by hand and just manually rotate it. So really, you can get creative here. You can use whatever you want. I'm gonna go ahead and use the mandrel. Um, and then we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna start the inlaying process. This should be everything I need to get through all of the inlaying steps. At that point, I will, get out my uh, Dremel tool here. I'll put a sanding bit on it and then we'll start uh, removing some of the inlay so we can get it flush. And then we'll go from there with the polishing steps. So now I've got the ring on the mandrel. I've got this block of wood here. I drilled a hole into it. That's going to fit the mandrel in there perfectly. That's just gonna hold it in place, make it easier for me to work on and a lot easier to film so you guys can actually see what's going on. Now onto the inlaying. This is gonna be fairly straightforward. I'm gonna start with my pyrite because I wanna pack a ton of that in there. I'm just putting down a small little patch of my medium CA adhesive, and then I'm using my tweezers and I'm placing in the pieces exactly how I want them. And there's no real right or wrong way to do this. You just kinda of put in as much or as little pyrite as you want, and I just go all the way around the inlay until it's got the look I'm going for.
Now the diamonds, I love adding these to rings for the sentimental value. I'm sure you guys have heard a diamond is forever. I just think it's quite special to know that your ring has real diamond in it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm going around and I'm making sure that I place the diamonds below the edges of the Damascus steel. This is important because diamond is incredibly hard. You're gonna have a very, very bad time sanding this inlay back down. Make sure it's below that surface. It's gonna save you so much headache. Now it's time to add the turquoise. And my strategy here is, again, very straightforward. I'm essentially just filling in any of the missing spots with turquoise. Anywhere there's space, I'm putting a piece of turquoise in there. And then once I went all the way around the inlay, it didn't look quite as natural as I had hoped. So to solve that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the turquoise, wrapping it up in this paper towel, crushing it, getting it really small, and I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle that all throughout the rest of the inlay. That'll really help add some variety to the inlay of the ring and make it look a lot more natural. Once I've got everything in place, I go around the whole ring with two layers of medium CA adhesive that fills in any remaining gaps that we missed with the inlay ingredients. Then to finish it off, I hit it with some accelerator. It's going to harden the CA adhesive really quickly. It should be ready to work on in about five or 10 minutes. All right, now we're ready to sand this down. And because I'm not using a lathe at all for this, this is gonna be a little bit tricky, but essentially I'm just taking my time here. I'm using rough grit sandpaper on my Dremel and I'm just sanding the entire outer diameter of the ring. I'm going slowly but surely. And then once I get close to getting the inlay flush with the rest of the Damascus steel on the ring, I go ahead and I start dipping the whole ring in water every few seconds. That keeps everything cool and it keeps the inlay clean. If you don't do that, you're going to sand a bunch of brime into that inlay and it's gonna look just kind of dirty and bad. So make sure to use plenty of water, that'll keep your inlay nice and clean. All right, now I've got the inlay flush. This ring is looking great, but now we need to sand and polish it. You can see there's a lot of really rough marks left from that Dremel. So I'm going to be switching over to sandpaper. We're just gonna sand this whole thing by hand. So I'm getting a nice large strip and every few seconds, again, I'm just dunking this in water. That'll keep everything nice and clean for us. Now once I've gone through all the different grits, it's time to give this a quick polish. So I'm pulling out my AstroTech Step 2 polish. This is a really great all-in-one polish. If you just have one step, this is the one to get. It's going to do a really good job of bringing out the shine and it's gonna be a lot faster than using all three of the steps. Now because this is a Damascus steel ring, we need to etch it in order to reveal the pattern that we sanded away when we are sanding down that inlay. So this step, you definitely want to take all of the correct safety precautions for. We're using muriatic acid, which is quite dangerous. If you're under 18, you absolutely should do this with the supervision of an adult. But we're just going to be using normal muriatic acid and normal hydrogen peroxide. You can get both of these from your local Home Depot. Then I'll pour it into an acid safe container. I'm pouring out about a quarter cup of each. And you'll see here, I've got my mask on as well as goggles. You do not want any of this in your lungs or in your eyes or really anywhere else. I've got my gloves on. Definitely make sure to be safe. Now before we etch it, this is important. I'm cleaning the ring very thoroughly. You can do this in soap and water, but I would definitely recommend using something a little stronger like alcohol. You can give it a very thorough wash with soap and water, or you can even use alcohol like I'm doing here. Don't use acetone because that can mess up your inlay. Now I'll go ahead and just dunk it in the acid and I'm going to leave it here for about 30 minutes total, but I'm going to make sure to flip it about two or three times every 10 minutes or so. And if you see it slowly bubbling, like you can see in this time lapse, that's a good sign. You don't want too many bubbles. That's going to be too fast. That can be dangerous. But if it's not bubbling at all, I'd suggest adding a little bit more hydrogen peroxide. 
Now once the etching is done, you need to neutralize the acid. So you're going to take the ring, and you're going to want to put it in some baking soda water. That will neutralize the acid, make sure that it's safe to touch. Also a side note, you should just keep a box of baking soda handy while you're doing this. If you have any acid spills, you need to immediately neutralize it with baking soda. All right, now before the grand reveal, what I like to do with Damascus steel after I etch it is I like to take some high grit sandpaper, so 500 and 1000 grit is what I'm using here, and I use that to highlight the raised sections of the Damascus steel. So all of those raised edges are going to get sanded and they'll just be a lot more shiny. That will give the ring this awesome contrasty look. Now one final polish with my AstroTech Step 2, and this ring should be finished. Here it is guys, check out this look. I think this thing looks incredible. We've got the Damascus steel that just has such an amazing premium look to it. And I love that pyrite and turquoise. They just go together so well. Such awesome contrasting colors and so many fun little details in there. Where we didn't add any of the glow powder to this ring, the inlay is left completely transparent. That lets you see down in and see all of the different details of all the small little pieces of pyrite and the turquoise. Just so much depth we have going on there. Not to mention the little diamonds that you can see here or there. What an awesome ring. And literally the only tool I use, you guys could see in the video, was this Dremel. If you get on Amazon, I think you can get one for a as little as $17. So there you have it guys. If you're looking for a fun new project to get into, this is one I would highly recommend. If you want to check it out, we'll have a link to the subscription box down in the description below. If you don't want to sign up for the subscription box, we also sell them just by themselves. So we'll have links to everything you need. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, do be sure to let us know. We'll be sure to get back to you. Also join our Facebook group. We have an awesome community built there. So yeah, if you're making your own rings, be sure to post them in that group. Tag me there. I want to see them. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.